I'm telling you today, on August 28, 2021, there are Christians like me who are trying to witness. They're trying to tell people about Jesus. They may not do it as loud mouth with street preaching, but they may not be able to. They might be trying to pass out gospel tracts. They may try to be going knocking on doors. They may take a Bible with a loved one, a co-worker. Or they may be doing it in an underground church. Such are those today in Afghanistan. In Afghanistan today, men and women like what I'm doing on the faith of Jesus Christ and the faith of the Word of God, the peaceful Muslims are killing Christians. The peaceful Muslims that your media and your government said are peaceful. The ones that brought down the towers on 9-11. Today are killing Christians. Even if they have a Bible app on their phone. I am here to tell you that Allah can't save your soul. And if a Muslim heard me, he'd chop off my head. If there's anything in the movement of Taliban that has been in the news recently, it's to tell you that Allah is a killing God. And he will shed your blood. But Jesus Christ shed his blood that we may have eternal life. That's the big difference. What is the difference between Jesus Christ and Allah? Allah wants you dead. And Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. Jesus Christ will give his Christians that are faithful and true, give them rewards of gold, silver, precious stones, crowns, and inheritance. Allah offers virgins. You don't know what they look like. Maybe they got to wear a veil because they're ugly dogs. How many Muslims do you know? I know a lot. I know a few of them and that they are saved. I know a whole bunch of them that are just good Muslims and they're good people. And that the fact is to get your virgins. A virgin is no more a virgin. So that don't last anymore. Allah in his Quran, whatever color you want to take it, has no prophecy. There is no life in the Quran. I have studied the Quran. I have read that nonsense. As much as a lie as the Mormons' book of Jesus Christ in their New Testament. Because what is lacking me, the difference between Allah and Jesus, is prophecy. At least 48 prophecies of the first coming of Jesus Christ. All fulfilled 100%. How he would be born, where he will be born, how the government was against him, how he would be betrayed, what his body would look like, how he would die, the date he would die. Jesus Christ knew what date, what time he would die. Allah don't know nothing. I could die by the words of preaching against Allah by your friendly Muslims. 
Your American Muslims are not true Muslims. They said they were American. They're as much, they are much Christians as the Catholic Church called themselves Christians, and the Catholic Church has murdered Bible-believing Christians standing on the Word of God. If there's one thing the Muslims and the Catholics have together is they kill Christians. You check out Fox's Book of Martyrs. You check about from the missionaries and the stories that are coming out of Afghanistan today. Missionaries of a King James 1611 Bible. Not what the media is telling you. Not what the politicians are telling you. What Christians are telling you. That those Muslims are killing Christians today. They are hiding. China kills Christians with Bibles. And yet there are Christians out there in the underground church. Russia. You got to turn off the TV. You got to turn off the fake news and open up your Bible and read. That Jesus saves. And all those that oppose and reject Jesus Christ. Will one day face Jesus Christ and declare that Jesus Christ is the Lord. That only Jesus Christ saves. Faith and belief in Jesus. And I dare you to go up to your Muslim friends and ask them what their hope is. I declare for you to ask your Muslim, hey, Mr. Muslim, preach what, whatever you do, whatever it is. Tell me what your hope is and tell me what your faith is built upon. They don't have assurance. They don't know. And they've changed their practices. And they've changed their way so the media won't crucify them. But every day, every week, for six years, and for my entire life of street preaching... It's been Jesus, it's been hell, it's been the gospel, it has been heaven, it is the King James Bible, it never changes. No much, how much of the Daytona City attorneys, the Daytona Police Department, all the things you try to stop the word of God, it's the same Jesus. And it's always going to be the same Jesus. Because there's nothing better than Jesus Christ. And I know for a surety, I know, April 21st, 1987, I knelt down at my grandma's coffee table. I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I know. I came out of the Catholic Church. I was a Polish Roman Catholic Church of St. Mary's Catholic Church in New London, Connecticut. I came out of that mess. I came out of the hope of the Pope. Because there is no hope in the Pope. I came into Jesus Christ. April 22nd, 1987, I began to preach about hell. I began warning. See, those that reject Christ, you don't know Christ. You don't get the indwelling Holy Spirit until you put your faith and trust in Jesus. You see, God is not going to show you Jesus. A physical Jesus. The little faith that you're going to get is a man that yells at you on a Saturday about Jesus for you to put your faith and trust in what he preaches. And then when you do believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, then the riches that come. I know you think I'm a fool. But did you know that the scriptures say that what I am doing, preaching to you, screaming to you, on this, do you know in the book of Corinthians, that Paul says it's foolish? 
Paul the Apostle agrees with you to say, hey, that man is foolish. That man is stupid. Out there yelling and screaming at the people. That's foolish. And Paul agrees with you. But where Paul disagrees with you is a man screaming and yelling at you may be foolish. But the message he preaches is not foolish. And that God would use a man to get up and preach blows the Gentiles' minds away. Because you would think, man, that guy can preach like he does. That, my, that man could get up and, and talk like he does. That man does it every... He should be doing it for a school. He should be up for a lecture, teaching students, teaching people, giving all kinds of... No, I'd do it for Jesus. I've got a God called loud mouth and I give it to God through the name of Jesus Christ. I give it all to the honor and glory of Jesus Christ. And whatever religions there are out there, and there are plenty of religions, have they come up to you and say, hey, this is how to get to our heaven. This is how you need to get peace. Even the Jehovah Witnesses do not come to your door about that. They don't even have a heaven. I can blast them away with the Bible. I can cause some of those Jehovah Witnesses to think, oh wow, that's what the Bible says? That's not what they teach. And not my knowledge, but the knowledge of the scriptures. I can get them to look at the truth in the word of God and see the lies of man. If I can get a Roman Catholic to open the pages of the Bible and to see what the Bible says and that their traditions contradict what the Bible says, there's hope. But there is no hope. in the Pope. There is no hope in Allah. I'm, de I'm deeply offended, but I I'm just going to just say it. I don't do anything. But, but I'm deeply offended how America will defend a religion that kills Christians. Well, I got nice Muslim friends. No, they're not Muslims. And even if they don't kill, how they treat their women, how they treat others. You know, there's absolutely no freedom in a Muslim country. You know, our troops, Marines and Army, are not allowed to bring their Bibles over the Middle East. It's forbidden. We go over there to fight for freedom, and they say, you can't bring your Bible. Religion kills. Jesus Christ saves. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses from all sin. It's the blood of slain people that will have you to be a murderer. 
And tell your Muslims, tell your Catholics that the Bible says, Thou shalt not kill. Tell the Catholic, Thou shalt not have any idols or images before me. Tell Hollywood, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Tell your politicians, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Tell all the world and Christians, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all sinners. And yet the Bible says, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. There is no other religion where there is hope. By whatever God it is, there's no hope in other religions. The Mormons, well, maybe, if I have enough babies, enough wives, we can populate outer space. We can go where rovers never been before. The Jehovah Witnesses, oh yeah, we, we got the satisfaction, we're at 144,000. And they're over a million or billion today. Anybody want to get a calculator? Take a million or billion, subtract 144,000. And those are the people that have no faith and no trust and no hope. Because their, their religion went wrong at 144,001. And their religion went wrong when Jesus Christ was supposed to return World War I. And he didn't show up World War II. And then when Mary Baker Eddy so behind the time that she took her rotary phone and put it in her coffin and no one of her religion has gotten a phone call from Mary Baker Eddy. Because there's no phone service in hell. And yet Jesus Christ, the very hope, the very message we are to preach, that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. The difference between Jesus Christ and religion is the empty tomb. Allah Muhammad is still in his tomb. The popes are still in their tombs. Mary Baker Eddy has not called from her tomb. But Jesus Christ, who suffered and died according to scripture, was buried, is seated at the right hand of the Father today, alive and well and in any moment he's going to come for his church but until then anybody who calls upon the name of jesus shall be saved 